Having trouble winning games in Madden 24? Whether you can't score on offense, or you just can't stop anybody on defense, Help me! Help me! This is the video for you. So if you want to see 15 cheats to win more games, stick around after the intro. For the fastest, cheapest, most reliable coins on the market, check out my coin sponsor MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back Money Team, in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys 15 tips, tricks, and cheats on offense, defense, and special teams that you can do every single game for a big advantage. But before I do, if you guys are enjoying the content and want to see more tips videos like this, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section, as it really helps out the video and the channel, and I appreciate the support. And if you want more help, you can instantly download any of my ebooks simply by clicking the links in the description or the top pinned comment. I'm going to start off with special teams, as there are several things that you can do here to gain an advantage, starting right with the kickoff. If you want to know the secret to getting big kick returns all you have to do is not sprint until your blockers get set this is because Madden is programmed in a way that hitting the sprint button tells your blockers to disengage and move on to further blockers down the field so if you sprint too early they will run right past their current blocks and move on to the next level so on kick returns don't sprint until your nearby blockers engage and it will make it easier for you to get around them when you sprint after that you will always want to take the kick off to the outside as kick return coverage you just do a poor job of outside containment which can often result in long touchdown returns. On the other side of that, if you're giving up big kick returns this year, you might not be kicking the ball off right, as the most popular kickoff method has changed over the years. In the last few years, it has been kicking to the fullback, but now there's a running back in this position making it easier for a big return. Some people prefer to squib kick, but I find it still easy to get big returns against this as well. Look, 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 look at this. Somebody come look at this. Look at this. Somebody come and look at this. Look at this. So the best way that I find to kick off is by kicking it normally into the far right corner of the end zone. This will usually result in either a touchback or at the very least a difficult return as it's hard to get all the way around the kick coverage from this area. There are also going to be times where you might need to get an onside kick, but did you know that there's a method for getting onside kicks at a higher rate as well? If you ever need to get the ball back, the best method is to choose strong onside kick as this is the only one that has a gunner on the left side taking this angle towards the ball. Then before you kick, hit the wire triangle button for a high kick. As this will bounce the ball up in the air and make the return man jump up as well. Then you'll want to fill up the kick meter at about 80% power for the onside kick so that it can travel the 10 yards required. The goal here is to make the recovery team member jump up in the air to get the ball as jumping or diving with the ball is programmed to cause more fumble animations more frequently. So if you can hit the return man while the ball is in the air before the camera reverses for the recovery, you'll usually get a fumble animation giving you a 50-50 shot at a recovery. If you're having trouble kicking field goals, there are several tricks that you can use here as well if you're having trouble with long field goals all you have to do is pull the left stick down towards you and it will lower the direction of the kick adding a couple yards to the distance if you're struggling with accuracy on shorter field goals and extra points just don't let the accuracy meter fill up the entire way and it will return at a lower speed making it easier to time on the accuracy portion of the kick next up i'm going to go over some tips for offense if you ever have trouble with drops or catching the ball it might be that you're not timing the catch correctly in madden whether you're playing offense or defense if you try to catch the ball too early or too late you'll get a bad timing penalty this was instituted in the game because there used to be an exploit several years ago where players found out that you could just hold the catch button throughout the play and get every interception but there is no penalty to hitting the button repeatedly so every time you go for a catch just spam whatever catch button you want to use and it will remove the timing needed and you'll make a perfect catch every single time if you need better pass protection you might think the best way to get this is by adding more blockers either by pass blocking the tight end or the running back but that would be too easy easy and Madden doing this has more negative effects than positive as blocking these players will fail in multiple ways number one if your opponent is in man zero defense blocking either of these players will actually change the defensive coverage assignments as the players who are supposed to man to these players will now turn into deep zone coverages making it harder to pass in that area and giving the defense the best of both worlds where well, they will still be getting the pressure from the blitz and they will also be getting better coverage because of your adjustment putting these players in pass blocks also make them poorer at blocking 
as blitzing defenders will often just run right by them. But there is a way to reverse this for the offense and give the offense the advantage in both, simply by putting these players on check and release routes instead. For one, they will actually block better as this is a much more consistent way of picking up initial pass rushers. And I've done several tests in previous videos to prove that the check and release route actually picks up the initial blitzer at a much higher rate, but it also holds the defenders in coverage as the running back and tight end are still technically on a route. They just might never run that route if they're engaged in a block. Just remember that they will eventually let go of whoever they are blocking and run that route eventually, so don't hold the ball too long expecting the blocking to hold up. My next tip has to do with an exploit that was created in the last patch update, and this has to do with running the football. When Madden 24 came out, it had a brand new feature in it called Read and React AI, where the defensive players would actively learn and react better to run plays that they have seen previously in the game. This feature is aimed at helping players against other players who spam stretch runs all game, as there is no natural defense in the game that stops these consistently, since almost every defense is programmed to drop the cornerbacks back after the snap, and the cornerbacks are easily blocked anyways. But EA quickly realized that this destroyed the run game completely as players were now shutting down the run too easily from small pass heavy defensive formations. So they changed the criteria for what the defense needs to have this activated. Now if you want to have the benefit of the read and react learning AI, you have to have the same amount of linemen and linebackers as the offense has offensive linemen and tight ends. Which sounds good in theory, but what if your opponent's offense has three tight ends? Most base defenses like the 3-4 and the 4-3 only have seven, while the offensive line already has five linemen on the field on any given play. So if you have an offense with three tight ends or even go as far as putting tight ends at receiver, you will get a total of eight, which most defenses can't match, guaranteeing that the adaptive AI will be turned off the entire game. Another tip when it comes to running the ball is for stamina. If you ever run a hurry up for a few plays, you'll notice that your entire offense will get really tired really quick and become less effective. But there are several ways to get your stamina back before you run another play. Situationally, there are things like end of quarter and two minute warnings that will give your players a chance to catch their breath or you can always just call a timeout. But you can also get stamina back on all of your players simply by rotating through the formations as quickly as possible for about 15 to 20 seconds before you call your next play. If you do this, you will notice that all of the players will change a few shades lighter and fresher for the rest of the series. Next up, if you ever run with your quarterback or receivers, you might notice that they are prone to fumble a lot. And that is because non-running backs are programmed to fumble more in Madden, unless you use my next trick. And that is the push in the right stick to bring up your offensive coaching adjustments. Most of these are worthless on offense, Offense, but if you ever want to turn off fumbling or at least significantly reduce it, all you have to do is set ball carry to conservative. Doing this will lose the ability to do most ball carry moves other than simply sprinting, but the fumbles will all but disappear. Next up, I'll go over some tips on defense, starting with pre-snap tells. If you ever want to know whether your opponent is going to run or pass, just look at the quarterback. If the quarterback ever taps his shoulders from under center or taps his hip from shotgun or pistol, this is the universal sign that he's communicating with the running back, either to flip a run play or to put him on a pass block. Most times you see this animation under center is to flip a run play, but if your opponent is in shotgun, they can't flip a run play, so you know right away that they're pass blocking. Every other adjustment from hot route to change in the play will result in the quarterback turning his head and yelling in the direction of the player that he's trying to communicate with. So if the quarterback turns and yells in the direction of the tight end or the receiver, he's putting them on a hot route. On offense though, you can hide one of these adjustments as long as you make it before the quarterback gets set. This is because the quarterback is already in an animation where he is surveying the defense. Another useful pre-snap function a lot of people don't know about is in your coverage adjustments. Most people know that you can press, back off, or shade coverage in any direction, but did you know that you can do these adjustments on just one receiver instead of universally for the entire defense? If you ever play against a really fast or good receiver and you want to do something specifically for them, all you have to do is hit the wire triangle button to bring up your coverage adjustments, then hit the A or X button, whether you're on Xbox or PlayStation, and it will give you the option for individual adjustments. After that, you have to select the receiver that you want to focus on, and you can choose to do things like back off if they're really fast, press or shade inside or outside, depending on which direction you think that they will want to run the route. All of this while leaving everyone else in base coverage. My last tip is the best way to tackle, and that is dive tackling, as this is one of the most overpowered ways to tackle in Madden 24. Dive tackling, for one, can get tackle animations from very far away, as sometimes all you have to do is barely touch a ball carrier to get a complete complete ragdoll animation that will always end the play, as this tackle type is the only one that never triggers a tackle battle animation. Another tip for tackle battle animations though is just to get into the habit of always tapping the A or X button whether you're on Xbox or PlayStation once again, as this is always the button that prompts for tackle battles, so if you're already in the habit of hitting this button repeatedly on contact whether on offense or defense, you will usually win the tackle battle right away or at least give yourself a very high chance to. So that's that's the video, if you guys want to see more tip videos that I made about offense and defense in the past, I will have them popping up on screen 
screen. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, and let me know in the comment section. And until next time, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.